Here's an idea. What if every movie took place in the same universe? Mm-hmm. I'm Eric Scott. What up? It's your boy, Rich Mike. Yo, it's Armand. Was it the best movie I've ever seen? Yeah, probably. Thank you, baby. And this is Across the Movieverse. Yeah. Yo, what are we talking about? <laughs> and background and action. Hey. Hey. We are here. This We're is back, Across the Movieverse. Boys. boys are back better than ever where everything is connected. How's it going? Happy to be here yeah. during our quarantine time. I know. I'm sipping here. I'm drinking a little margarita. Dude, I'm over. I'm in Quarantinaville over here. I'm having a good time. <laughs> it's corona, uh, corona-cation. Man. Your mar- margarita was, a, was dip spit in water. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking I'm losing it over here. Wasted away again in Quarantinaville. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if, if that hasn't been made yet, I'm going to make it this week. It's not that good. That's how you get famous, dude. I think it's pretty good. It's a play on words. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know when this episode is going to come out, because if we do another episode, it might come come out later. But right now it is uh, it's March 17th. It's, it's a Tuesday, and we are in the midst of a, a global pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's my everyone's first one. Fre- everyone's freaking out. I'm freaking out. People, are, Yeah, it's just a lot of freaking out going on right now. All the stores yeah. are empty. Stores, well, yeah, all the, the shelves, all the non... Luckily, I've been eating uh, like I'm preparing for a quarantine for years. Just like cans of tuna, <laughs> instant mashed potatoes, anything that's just to add water. That's I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. I, I, could, be, I could either be a quarantine victim or a uh, astronaut, I'm pretty sure, with, with my food. Speaking of astronauts, did you see that they're hiring at NASA? I, I thought I looked up into the application, but I'm far underqualified. <laughs> hey, you never know, man. Yeah, they might they might be looking for someone. They might look for a comedian, you know. Well, that's what my I, screenplay is about. I, uh, I was just changing my headphones. I didn't hear that. But if it's about the post-apocalyptic world, need a goddamn bunny, man. This just in. they The world does not need a funny man. Not at all. Uh, stand up, stand up's gonna die in the next. Uh, if we're in here for a few months, which is probably for the best, it's a, it's a pretty shitty art form at the time. <laughs> Died six months ago, baby. Yeah, but maybe or maybe it'll come back stronger than ever. All the weak people will quit. All the uh, gender binary people have to pick one. Gender non-binary. <laughs> you got to figure something out. Mm-hmm. And once again, the straight white man will reign supreme. <laughs> That's who's coming out on top. Yeah, I, you know, maybe we're immune or something. I don't know. I don't know. My but, dad seems pretty sick, and he's a allegedly straight white male. He's definitely does your dad, white and male. Uh, does your dad have the coronavirus? He's got something. Yeah. I try to like in his eye. <laughs> every morning I wake up and I have to like assess like, oh, is this the normal amount of shitty that I feel? Or is this like a new form of shitty? Because I felt bad for seven years. <laughs> Right. It's tough to gauge. Did I eat pizza within the last week or do I just feel this virus within me? Yeah, yeah seriously. Yesterday, I'm like yesterday I was like um I was like, do I am I getting sick? I was like, no, nah, I'm just I'm just really hungover. Yeah. Did I smoke thirteen spliffs while wearing my VR headset? That could be part of it. <laughs> Dude, I've been I've been watching tons of movies though, uh in the break. What have you been watching? So just in the last few days, I watched Big Time Adolescence, which is the it's on Hulu. It's Pete Davidson and this kid, and he's like this older, like twenty three year old that hangs out with this sixteen year old. Pretty uh, pretty good flick. Hour and a half, good good time. Mm-hmm. Love me uh, short movie. I went and saw Bloodshot in the theaters. This is before all the theaters shut down. They've got a. It was pretty good. Vin Diesel in a uh, in a wife beater most of the time, which is good. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. That's a classic. I'm starting to think that a wife beater is just Vin Diesel's skin. Like, <laughs> like, like Vin, take your shirt off. I, I, I did take my shirt off. Vin doesn't take his shirt off in movies, though. Not anymore. No. Not, for the, not after the incident. After the accident. <laughs> the incident. Did he? Uh, did he 
flash somebody. <laughs> he was just showing. He wasn't like groping anybody, doing anything that weird. He was just making the extras look at his pecs. Yeah, they were uncomfortable. He's and like, <laughs> food, the craft service table, even more so. Oh yeah, he'd like he'd be like, "Hey, do you know where?" He'd do that flexing, like, "Hey, do you know which way the bathroom is?" <laughs> yeah, you know where really, uh, the traffic truck is. <laughs> try to flirt with women. <laughs> well, I, saw, I saw Bloodshot. I went and saw uh, I went and saw Onward in theaters, which is like a DreamWorks uh, animated film. Was that cool? It was pretty good. I was in like this good theater, good recliners, middle seat, third row, prime acoustics. But these uh, this family behind us, not going to mention their race. They looked like Armand, and <laughs> they were <laughs> they're, they're a couple of a bunch of. <laughs> A handful of Castillos behind me, <laughs> and uh, and one little kid kept coughing. And like, I'm thinking, I'm like, we're we're about to be quarantined, lady. Get this sick kid out of here. I'm trying to watch a child's movie. <laughs> and uh, then they just let him watch another movie on their phone with the volume up. <laughs> the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That's not teaching anyone anything. Yeah, Jesus. No. It's like oh, the parents wanted to watch them. They they're sucked into the plot of Onward now, so they're like, "Yeah, watch watch whatever." And I could just li- I was just hearing what the little kid was listening to. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't take their phone away; they're stuck crying. So it's like you either listen to another movie on full blast, or you gotta listen to this little bastard just cry because he can't have his phone. I mean, it's like I think it's bad for kids overall, but as far as like getting a baby to stop crying, if it works, like that's that works for me. Like if I'm around a baby and it's crying, I'll be like, give it a give it a phone, give it a tit, give me either one too. <laughs> have a good time. Yeah, baby phone, I'll take it. Relieve the situation. Phone. Yeah, seriously. Either way, give give me a tit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the tit. Take the phone, leave the tit. <laughs> that was the Godfather uh <laughs> deleted scene. <laughs> leave the baby the phone. Give me Put the, the tit. tit. Put the tit in the basket. <laughs> Don't make any sudden movements. No one gets hurt. <laughs> uh, so I saw Onward, and then I watched uh, Dean, which is this Dimitri Martin wrote and directed a film. Uh, Rory Scovel's in it. Rory put it on his Instagram, so I watched that, and it was really good. Um, I watched Good Times, which is the Safdie brothers. I'm, I want to watch all of like A24 movies. They're, they're so damn good. Yeah. Uh, A24 is the Safety Brothers. Uh A24 is the production company. They're they're like any good independent movie out right now for the most part's them. Like uh Mid or Midsummer Hereditary, uh Mid 90s, oh. that was all them. Uncut Gems. Uh Moonlight. But I watched that, that was really good. And then last night I watched American Honey, which is like this 3-hour Shia LaBeouf like white trash kids selling magazines around the country and it's mm-hmm. also very good. I'm really I'm I'm having a film education. I'm like taking notes during these things. It's great. That's what I need to start doing. That, taking notes. That A twenty four uh movie fucking thing sounds like your childhood. We got the skater movie, the cult movie, mm-hmm. selling movie, magazines, selling magazines, being Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is one hell of an actor. Oh, he's the best. Oh, he's good. He's yeah. number one. I love that at at a theater in New York, it's the IFC theater. I think Leahy or we might have been in town together uh, when this was happening. When Shia LaBeouf was doing that art piece where he watched all of his movies in a row, Ooh. and I they were it was the theater was full. Like one person leaves, another person gets to go in, but you could just sit with Shia LaBeouf and watch him watch Shia LaBeouf. It's just pretty hilarious. cool. Yeah, I mean, I tuned in for a little bit, and then I was like, yeah. all right, he's just he's a little too much. I gotta. I tuned in a little bit. It was like, yeah. these movies are too good. I popped on Transformers yeah. 1, 2, mm-hmm. and 3, ran them back. You know? Yeah. He, uh, have you seen Honey Boy? No. Mm-mm. It's on Amazon Prime, I think, which I have. I'm looking guys... at a Honey Boy. Is it a Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, dude. It's like a Shia LaBeouf, uh, um, almost like biopic. It talks about kind of like his life when he was a kid. Or it's like loosely based off it. And he plays his own dad. And his dad was a real nightmare, so it's a really good acting experience. So it's not like it's not like uh, Eddie Murphy playing his family, and it's like a comedy. It's 
Yeah, they are all. You know Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Wait, he's selling magazines in Honey Boy. No, that's American Honey. He he was in two Honey films. He was also in the reboot of Honey with Jessica Alba. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them dancing. Uh, no, I wish I would love all to right, see I'm a. Sorry, I mixed it up. I would love to see a Nutty Professor reboot with all the same characters, all black, all fat, and have Shia LaBeouf play all of them. <laughs> How good so would that be? He's doing fat blackface. Yeah. <laughs> fat, fat black. I think it's just blackface still. I don't, I don't know. Think I don't know what's more offensive. Yeah. I think but you like, can do fat face. Yeah, I mean, uh, Shallow Hell. Yeah, Shallow Hell. Yeah. L. Tyra Banks did it at, to see how fat women were treated, and she uh, came back. She's like, "Hey, I don't like this. I'm gonna be hot again." And then, <laughs> yeah. It was good. Would it be nice if fat if fat women who want to lose weight can just do that? You know, put on a skinny. Yeah, put on a skinny, skinny. outfit and be like, "All right, you know, this, I, I love this." Those VR headsets, you never know. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, they'd be skinny. You're feeling them up, and then you start to feel that that fat squish. Yeah. Sometimes at iFly, I'll have to hold a really fat person. They're shaped like they're like little meatballs, and my my hand will like go inside of them like a like plastic bag full of mashed potatoes. It's you hear it come out, and it's just like whoop. It's disgusting. <laughs> you ever feel like it's gonna eat you? You know. The oh, absolutely. You get Sl- sleeves rich ripped off. Mm-hmm. Pretty crazy. I gotta go. I'm iFly is still open though. iFly never closes. We don't give a fuck about it. We'll just fly around the germs. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if any indoor skydiving f- fanatics out there, hit your boy up. I'll be there. Don't bring up the podcast. And people come in. <laughs> uh, all, most of our reservations are canceled, but yeah, some people do come in. Nice. The real diehards, and sometimes they t- they tip pretty well too. So that's and also I have no income right now, so things are going all right for old City Rick. Yeah. So are you guys in a complete shutdown, New York? uh yeah i mean grocery stores are open uh restaurants and stuff are open for takeout and delivery but yeah, all yeah. restaurants all cl- all comedy clubs it's crazy yeah it is nuts yeah that's kind of where we're at now too yeah well should we uh what do you think should we dive into the film we watched this week yeah absolutely let's give it a shot we watched uh any given sunday the oliver stone joint LL Cool J, Jamie Foxx, Al Pacino joint, and uh, funny move saying LL Cool J as the <laughs> number one credit in this movie. He was the prime protagonist of the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mike. I think this was you brought this up because you started watching it drunk one night, right? And you said, and you said this movie is bad, and we're like, let's watch it. Yeah, I. <laughs> I remembered it worse than it was when I rewatched it. I was like, "Man, Pacino's pretty good." Oh, those Pacino's those Pacino great. speeches he was given. Oh, great! You know our friend uh, Steve Tapas. Yeah. Right before I moved, uh, he was living at my apartment when he was a little homeless, and uh, I gave him like two caffeine pills, and then he's just in my living room pacing back and forth, yelling the Game of Inches speech. <laughs> from any given sunday he used to get yeah. blackout drunk at open mics and he would he would just go up and burn <laughs> he would burn his whole time by doing this whole speech but would get the people going <laughs> like <laughs> they were losing it i was thinking this speech i was like i watched this speech when i was in high school so many kids do good speech this speech is about a man like failing at life and like being on his last leg yeah and like yeah. in football inches don't matter as much as yards this guy's just so bummed out but what are Giant yards made out of Mike? man yards are made out of inches three feet Dude, just like mike, life mike that fourth that fourth and one um that they stop that, him at. that comes that, up by an inch it comes up by an inch so yeah that's good for football talk but pacino's giving a speech about how his how shitty his life turned out you think he was talking about how many inches he was going to get that that prostitute, yeah, Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Spano yeah. from Save oh, by the Bell. Yeah. yeah, he was talking about fucking her. Jace, Jesse Spano. Hey, mama. Hey, mama. She's a babe. She just like comes up like, yeah, when I was a really, really, really little girl, you know, I used to think about you. <laughs> yeah. you a prostitute I mean, that Coach Al Pacino fucks is Jesse Spano <laughs> from Save by the Bell, as well as uh, the main star from Flashdance. No. no sh- showgirls. Showgirls. Have you she seen Showgirls? Her- 
I've never seen it. I've seen parts of it. There is. Have you seen the sex scene from Showgirls? Is that the oh, one you've seen? Of course, I've yeah. seen it. When she's in I the have... pool and she's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like I need to see this. Yeah, pop. We're, hey, we're gonna take a quick intermission here. And uh, no, <laughs> this this is a, a a wild sex scene, and it's with uh, <laughs> fucking the husband from Desperate Housewives, uh, who gets murdered by that red haired lady, and she is just riding him like a mechanical bull at joe's brewery on a tuesday night dude <laughs> just losing her damn mind i watched that movie for the first time with with five of my grown adult football coaches <laughs> just you and them yeah it was just my dad had went to sleep they were all drunk at my house i'm like a junior <laughs> high school partying with these dudes they're so i wasn't even drinking i was just having the best time of my life wouldn't trade that memory for a million dollars i might actually i might but <laughs> They were losing it when we were watching this this crazy porn with my football coaches. <laughs> awesome. So close to being <laughs> creepy that I don't know if I want to ask any more detail about hey, it. Hey, it was a game of inches that night. I'll tell you. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> we were <laughs> we were gaining inches. <laughs> inch by inch. <laughs> Man. It was- the difference between living and dying. <laughs> when did it lose it? Oh man! But uh, showgirls, showgirls has a has a real place in my heart and a bigger one in my pants for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. But anyway, uh, Jesse Spano shows tits in showgirls, of course. Unnecessary boob in there's every any given pa- Sunday. My favorite line from Showgirls is uh, they're they're practicing to become Showgirls, and the director, this like I think he's straight, but he's like kind of flamboyant, like a, just like a stage director. And he walks up to her, and he looks at her, and he and he looks at her tits and her soft nipples, and she go, he goes, "I'm erect. Why aren't you erect?" <laughs> <laughs> it's such a I good wish scene. I could just say that, you know. That's what you yeah. remember. <laughs> Just walk up to some random girl and be like, I'm erect. Well, it is. <laughs> You're erect. <It's> not... <laughs> I know it's not just some random girl. Just... But you, if you but, see you know, Nip. Yeah, I guess, right? You can bite. <laughs> Shark bites. Mm-hmm. Might as well be a, be a green light. A little red nip's a green light, if you ask me. <laughs> All right, that's on that's on our bumper stickers. <laughs> a, a red nips, a green light. <laughs> Man. All right. Uh, Put a baby's face on the sticker. Mm-hmm. Baby on board. Baby yeah. arm on board. Baby arm on board. Oh, arm on. Baby arm on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Man, this quarantine has got that's like, me <laughs> losing it. That's like the um that's like the sticker that white girls put on their bumper to get their dads angry. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause I'm> brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the sticker girls put on their car to get their dad mad is is you. <laughs> yeah, yeah Armand on board. Yeah. <laughs> and- uh, so, any given Sunday takes place around a football team, the uh, the Miami Sharks, in a fictionalized uh, league, which also the NFL still exists. Yeah, yeah, I love how it's fictional, but they still name like great players and like Lombardi and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, I was I was reading online that uh, they're supposed to be like a more successful version when there was like the World Football League and the American Football League, that was also kind of its own thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's like, a, a, but it's just, they even mentioned that they can't get the new stadium in Miami because most of the funding for football goes towards the dolphins. So it's not as successful as the NFL, but people still, people still love it. Yeah. Almost kind of like the XFL. Yeah. 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 So the, uh, the Miami sharks, they're a team and they're on a, a four game losing streak. Uh, it seems like it's been kind of heading that way for years, but they got the star quarterback it's fitting that we're doing this today too, since Tom Brady just announced that he's yeah. going. And he, there's like a character that's like a Tom Brady. Uh, he looks a little older, but Cam. like 
supposedly kind of past his prime, but he's just like he's the best thing for this town. People love him like a Tom Brady mm-hmm. in Boston. Tom Brady just got switch or he just said he's gonna go to the Bucks. The Bucks next yeah, season. Tampa Bay. <laughs> the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> he's going and, to the uh, NBA. There's a. Uh, I bet he Super could do it, dude. I bet. I bet LeBron he not, James. He could barely run. LeBron James uh, could play in the NFL. No doubt. Yeah. Um. Uh, so they uh, Dennis Quaid is star quarterback. Past his prime, he gets hurt in the in the, during the yeah. season. Bring another quarterback, he gets hurt, and up next is none other than Steeman Willie Beeman. Jamie, Jamie motherfucking Fox. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. And uh classic, classic football story. Guy gets off the bench, uh, is aw- automatically like he fucks up the first like few times and then he's just amazing. He's better than anybody on the team. He's like he's got a huge head, Big becomes an now. asshole. He record that's just it's Saracen in Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. It's uh fucking it everybody. Uh, and every football movie ever where uh, a no-namer becomes a star yeah, Johnny, is this guy's origin story. This is Ark. Yeah, Johnny Mox, Johnny yeah. Varsity Blues, the, var- the Varsity Blue Universe. That was big. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, so, you know, conflicts ensue. They start button heads with the coach. They got problems from the, the now owner, former owner's daughter, Cameron Diaz. And she's really just caring about the numbers. She doesn't value mm-hmm. the players as much. She doesn't value like loyalty. She doesn't care about Al Pacino, who's also kind of past his prime. Uh, Strictly business with her. Yeah, yeah. she's. I she's trying know, to put like... players in when they're hurt, like in their their heads are gonna fucking. So she blow can get up. rid. Of... She's. she's a yeah. terrible hit. She's trying to like live up to her dad's name, but, and she's. Seems pretty good at it, but she makes mistakes along the way. All the characters in this movie, fucking none of them have a resolution. Like this yeah. movie is very similar to Friday Night Lights, where like Booby Miles is left like fucked. Everything is football. I can't do nothing but play football. They even said yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. I'm what am I gonna do with football? That part is pretty sad. Though. Oh, it's so sad. I, I, well, I mean, I also lost my chance of going pro in football. You guys know this story. Uh, when I blew out my knee senior year of high school, and uh, it was the first year I wasn't a little fat fuck. So <laughs> I was pretty, I was pretty good for the first time in nine years, and then I tore almost every ligament in my knee. Jesus and it was, Christ. and it was when they, it didn't hurt that bad, or I wasn't like. It, crying until the woman said like oh you're you're done for the season and then i just fucking i'm like oh no my life's over because yeah. uh i don't know how to do you're nothing but play football. Bang me now you know yeah Someone's gonna, i'm just a magician now i know that that was the hardest part to just have only <laughs> magic fall back on magic dude uh that that was my fallback plan uh in nfl <laughs> play i remember in like seventh or like sixth grade, our teacher had us write these like future career, like what do we want to be when we grow up or like a realistic thing that we could be when we grow up. So I wrote NFL player and the teacher's like, you're not going to be an NFL player. <laughs> and I'm thinking like looking back, I'm like, oh yeah, I know. Of course not. But like, why would you tell me that at sixth grade? She just looks, she's like, you're not going to do that. <laughs> like let the kid have some dreams, you know? Setting you straight. Yeah. You're a farmer's kid. Your daddy's a farmer. I'm a fireworks you, salesman's kid. His daddy was a farmer. And his I, daddy's daddy was a farmer. I don't want your life. You're a farmer, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Cameron Diaz just cares about. So she's button heads with Al Pacino, wants to get rid of him, going to like go behind his back, is really trying to appoint this other assistant coach, uh, offensive coordinator. That's the Two real... Two-faced. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Eckhart. That's his name, right? And uh, yes. uh, also Dr. Cox is a uh, reporter, a mean reporter for like an ESPN type outlet. And then, uh, yeah, they eventually start winning games with Steam and Willie Beeman. Gets a huge head. He records a rap video. There's a there's a mm-hmm. music video in the middle of the movie, uh, which is like, did that happen in in the 90s? Was that like 
a thing for football players to just re- he was he played two games and was really good and they're like put his name on a bus we're yeah. gonna give him a music yeah. video every sponsorship he's steaming beaming baby he's steaming he's marketable man my name the is beaming. like his name is beaming he's got hey, the girls creaming got the girls creaming for and it was for like a it was at the end it was like sponsored by protein powder and he's talking about cream women cream that was a flavor of the protein powder yeah. <laughs> lady lady cream Wait, lady cream <laughs> Lady Cream was also a uh, yeah was, made was official, a, you know. Lady Queen, Lady Cream also op- opened a, a drag queen operated ice cream shop. That I know, <laughs> <I've been to. laughs> Hi, I'm Lady Cream. All right, that, oh, was, a, that, that was a stretch. <laughs> uh, yeah, Big Head records rap videos, butts head with coaches. He keeps changing the plays in the playbook, and eventually. Yeah, he feels yeah. like he has everything figured out. Like, yeah. oh, I'm just here to dumps his to... girlfriend. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's 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 not realizing that it's for the team. You can't win without a team. It's not just a one player game. game yeah, people are going to try to take advantage of you if you stay alone. It takes him two games to get a huge head. One game to learn his lesson, and then which is hilarious. The cause... fourth game to come back in the playoffs and come back in the second yeah. half and. Still lose, but unless this unless this like good. season's different, like there's so much, um, uh, these characters like find themselves within like two weeks, two three weeks. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so much happens and yeah. so much conflict happens in this movie, and one one week after the other, it's like there's no way Cameron D as the owner's the new owner, but the owner's daughter. Walks into the locker room and we see so much Dude. big old black dong. There's well, and she walks up and there's just black hog everywhere. Black hog down <laughs> and she... <laughs> <laughs> movie's and... packed with stars. <laughs> and he just shakes Cameron Diaz's hand, at, like just full fully exposed. I was hoping she would grab hog, thinking that was his arm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that thing was. Huge. Oh my god. <laughs> That's man arm on. <laughs> like his hog grabbed her hand and shook it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you go, uh, like they kept having to retake it. Like, Cameron, that's that's his dick. She was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. She's shaking it. Dude, yeah. That thing had I, some heft to it. In all the movies I watch, it's always purposeful and necessary, Black Hog. In this movie, it was just so unnecessary, well, mm-hmm. you know, Black you know, Hog. Who, who actually walks up to Jamie Foxx and just grabs Hog is Walter Goggins and Django and Jane. Oh, it's yeah. like when they finally catch him at the end, he's hanging upside down. And Walter Goggins just like grabs a hold of his fucking package. Damn. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of male nudity. Uh, pretty progressive of the time, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The in the in the locker room scene, another thing that happens right after the the hog incident. Uh, there, the like crazy white lineman t- gets an alligator and puts it in the showers. That he just has with him in the locker room, apparently. Yeah, they're making fun of his. The African American teammates are making fun of him in the shower for dancing poorly, but we could all probably infer it's because he's got a small dick. Yeah. And he comes mm-hmm. in and is like, oh, no, not me. Five minutes later, comes in there, tosses a big old gator. They're loving it, though. He's like, who's, who's he so like? They're, yeah, they're a couple dance. boys playing in the mud. They're yeah, loving it. Let the boys play. And uh the the like cutting of this movie, there was over three thousand cuts in the filming. It was mm-hmm. shot like a very like avant garde, like European experimental mm-hmm. film. There was male there was like it was very European because there's male nudity, there's casual titty. Like when uh Jesse yeah. Spano's sitting like smoking a cigarette talking, yeah, with, like one tit's just hanging out. That's like I love a casual tit, dude. It's just yeah. like, hey, I'm I'm just here. It's, they don't need a, they don't need a whole production it's just fucking it was like this thing was here yeah. when i got here you know well, it's, not, <laughs> it's not like a big deal out of it yeah she sat like that we didn't we didn't pull her shirt away you know she just sat down and hey, some, kept filming sometimes you know there's a, just a tit out and you got to be cool yeah and that's and that's you can't move too quick <laughs> sometimes they'll go back in its little little foxhole that's how you know you got the the take you know you don't have to do another one once no, you see that, once you see that, and boom. when Jesse Spano 
climbs on top of Al Pacino, you see a little back puss. Oh, do you? She wasn't wearing underwear? <laughs> through the underwear. You got to look through the underwear. That's the key. Oh. <laughs> Is that what your VR said? That's it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm like okay, <laughs> it's, all right. Uh, I see what she's got. All right. I'm, I do. I I pause it. Like went back and then forward. I'm not gonna pretend like I didn't pause it, but <laughs> there's, definitely, yeah. there's definitely underwear there. Well, you can you can see the 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 outline of it. I think. Yeah. This quarant I mean, this quarantine's got me fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if I'm ever gonna see a a post again. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think only on the sc- on the the big screen, you know. Oh man, on my VR. And uh, yeah, there's that uh, Dennis Quaid. They're so mean to him. His wife is horrible to him when he gets yeah, hurt. She's just a terrible human. <laughs> she's she slaps him across the fucking face for wanting to retire. She is like clearly the a woman who is just strictly in it for the fame and glory that her husband gets and yeah. that she gets along with it. Yeah, he was like, I'm hurt. My head's fucked up. I take painkillers every day. That sounds cool. And he's she's like, just like, don't be a pussy. Yeah, she Get slaps him after he's like, my head's broke. If if they would have known about a – so this the a lot of the injury stuff was based off this book uh, that like a doctor on the sidelines wrote, like exposing the NFL. And that's – Oliver Stone had the rights for that, and he wanted to make that its own movie. But then he got this, and Al Pacino became attached to it. But a lot of the information in that backstory comes from, like, real shit. I mean, that, that kind of makes sense with um, James Wood being a piece of shit doctor that doesn't care about any of the players. And then... Um, He's just trying to get a little, Harvey, little puss. Harvey Dent. A little whatever. cheerleader puss. Um, what's his name? Guy that plays Harvey Dent. Aaron Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart um, kind of exploits him. No, no, that's not... No, Harvey his Dent. assistant Sorry, his assistant doctor exposes yeah. James... The head team doctor, James Woods. Mm-hmm. Aaron Eckhart's the offensive coordinator. Yeah. But, like, this movie really leaves a lot of un-fucking-wrapped-up ends. Like, this is, like, an episode of Friday Night Lights. What do you... Mm. I was thinking, like, what are the episodes if they were to make oh, yeah. every given, any given Sunday a Friday Night Lights TV series? What are those episodes? First episode I mean, is Landry killing a guy. Yeah, which they never come back to in Friday Night Lights. Spoiler alert: season like four or five, Landry and Darla. No, not Darla. Skyler, Twyla, Tan- <laughs> Twyla. No, it's Tanya. Right? No, what is it? Oh my god! What kind of names are these? <laughs> these are white trash names. <laughs> yeah. What's your? They all sound good. What's your? I've name? never seen Friday Night Lights. Only. Oh, movie. you should watch it. Mike and I watched yeah. it in a senior year of college together all the way through. It was great. And then we did it like three more times. Very yeah. good. It's Is such it a good show. Remember, I remember one time uh, it was uh, Jack. What was that that kid's name who's a pledge when we were seniors? Jack yeah, something? Yeah, Jack. Uh, Jack Sparrow. No. Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Jack Farrow. Jack Farrow. That's what it was. And he, I, I would fall asleep during every TV show we'd watch. That was just kind of my thing. And Jack Sparrow, I woke up like five hours later. He was still watching the show, sitting in my room with me when when they were doing live-ins. He just sat in my room for five hours of sleep. We were watching TV. Good kid. Hope he's doing all right. Loved Friday Night Lights. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you can go back to sleep, dude. I'll just I'll hang here. That's so funny. But yeah, first episode would be Dennis Quaid going down, Jamie Foxx throwing up on the field, and then throwing like a like. Mm-hmm. Second episode would be the aftermath of that. Him and his girlfriend like starting to get into a fight. LL Cool J's, Tim Reagan's, drinking beers. Drinking yeah. beers. Uh, upset that he's not getting his yards. He wants his bonus. Mm-hmm. Th- those, wants all, those, all those side plots with people like talking about one more concussion and they'll, their brain will shut off. That'd be, mm-hmm. that'd be a little ep. Yeah. LT. That, I bet that, that fi- uh, well, final episode would be so good. That... Uh, defensive coordinator, old black coach Jim Brown, ends up going to coach high school. His like, dr- yeah. there's This movie is a Friday night fucking night's lights season in one one movie, two and a half long ass hour movie. Like fucking Friday sequence. night lights was like an HBO show or something. Yeah, here's Without here's an idea. Sex. How come the show. the merchandise department for Friday night lights never sold the Friday night light? You know, for like 
be a little, little football. Yeah. For scared kids, you know, Friday night lights. Why don't we do a booby miles one and it's just a boob? Yeah. Okay, now we're talking. Black boob. Oh man. Black boob was a he was a good pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear about him much. No. But when you see him, you want to look. <laughs> <laughs> uh what else? Uh yeah, eventually they the the speech that he gives, that's at like halftime of the big game, right? That the game of inches, or is that the beginning of the game? Start, Start of the game, game yeah. And Al Pacino Inch. delivers this phenomenal Inch. phenomenal speech. Go yeah. Google it if you haven't seen it. It's uh it's really unbelievable. And uh yeah, eventually they go out they win that game, cuts to a press conference. And turns out they lost the following game or later on in the playoffs. Al Pacino's resigning. We think it's like he's coming to terms with being an old fuck and yeah. out, out of touch. And then like Cameron Diaz is getting her way. Aaron Eckhart gets to play. And then he reveals that he's going to another team and he's bringing Steam and Beeman with him. They mended their their rivalry. And uh, yeah, so wish we would get a sequel. Which should be it. Ooh, any given Sunday series. We should write that. I got so much free good. time. It might be like Ballers, though, which yeah. is good. We should make Ballers a Baller series as well. <laughs> Have you just tried rewriting the Ballers series? <laughs> <laughs> Let's reboot Entourage and pitch that. <laughs> <laughs> but all uh, black dudes. All black dudes. We, can, we could probably do that. Okay. All black Entourage. Maybe- and just it'd call be it, very me too focused, but I'm down. Entourage. I'm in. Just call it Black Entourage. Yeah. <laughs> be pretty good. Uh, <laughs> black Turtle. We got Blackie. <laughs> Blackie. You we can't got call Black him, you, you can't call him Blackies anymore. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> black Spacey, man. God, I hope black. my window's not open. <laughs> I live in a. <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> My let's say let's say my neighbors wouldn't want me talking like this. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna Same mention. Here. Not gonna mention. Don't the be saying. Don't they, be saying black e white boy. No not, black e like from black entourage. <laughs> you're like oh shit is black entourage on and then they run inside. Go check it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna say what my neighbors look like, but let's say they would be good characters on black entourage. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, uh. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in this film. Um, a lot of I wrote was just about the the hog in the locker room. Uh, I can see the reflection in your glasses. Get off that page, yeah. Eric. <laughs> I'm looking at the the hogs. Oh, yeah. Yo, did you guys know that uh, a bunch of people auditioned or were going to be Willie Beeman, but uh, none other than P. Sean. Uh, Sean Diddy Combs, no Sean P Diddy Combs. <laughs> but his Sean first name was P, and his his his, nick, his rap name was Sean Diddy. <laughs> P, P, Sean Diddy. Man, uh, but it was it was uh, P Diddy was supposed to be Willie Beeman, but the, and they said it was scheduling conflicts. But some people said that he was just so unathletic he couldn't throw a football, and that's why they got rid of him. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, you see how big those coats he's wearing. He doesn't look athletic at all. No. Really. He was yeah, trying to he was trying to throw a football he's, in one of those big coats. Yeah. He tried to he, that's this movie is why he tried to flip from Puff Daddy. Why he needed to flip from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy. Yeah, probably. I imagine him like running a doing a shuttle run in like a fur coat and like a bunch of chains. And like they're like, Diddy, you gotta you gotta take those off, man. <laughs> like, no, this is this is what I wear. Pacino. You think they you think they pitched the music video? Of Willie Beeman, and they're like, "All right, we're gonna get P Diddy." Oh, yeah, that, that definitely gonna play this. that makes. And then some... they were like, "Oh wait, he actually has to play football." Shit. <laughs> yeah. How fucking mad was LL Cool J that he got the running back role in a movie where Jamie Fox played a, the lead and the quarterback, and then also had like a rap career as well. Yeah. LL Cool J is like, "Can I get a rap song?" I'm actually, I think Jamie Fox was a rapper for a little bit, right? Uh, he, he, yeah, I think so. He's yeah. also a really good, like, R&B singer. Yeah. I mean, he's, pr- uh, he, like, learned how to play football, uh, for the movie, or, like, throw a football like that. He's just a pretty, pretty amazing guy. Yeah, he's very, very talented. Very strong. You to be blind for Ray. <laughs> very strong, very muscular. I'll very tell you what, after seeing Cameron Diaz 
when she walked through the locker room, you see that big old African American hog, and then she walks over to a little tiny Jamie Fox, and he's wearing a jock strap. Not impressed with his package. Yeah. Let me tell you, no, yeah. they, it's like a uh, like a perspective thing, I think. But they really <laughs> dissed on Jamie Fox. Yeah. Do you think they asked him like, "All right, Jamie, what do you think? You want to go? Want to go whole hog on this one?" And he's like, "Nah, better <laughs> better keep it in the holster, baby." <laughs> <laughs> keep this thing i maybe, hope so maybe he uh maybe it grew a little bit before django unchained because that thing was he maybe. was hanging upside down it was slapping him in the forehead i'm pretty sure yeah <laughs> wait you see it upside down in django unchained had to, like grab a handful of it you know just so it yeah. got back up to... L- looked like a fireman carrying the hose he's just looking, <laughs> like you're trying to <laughs> like you're trying to hold a big thing of rope you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like it's like spilling over the edge, and it's like really hard to hard to hold on to. One of my friends was like, "You're going over to Armand's to record this podcast," and I was like, "No, uh, the D is silent. It's Armand. It's silent because it's not in the, his name." <laughs> she was right, so it was good. Armand Unchained. Especially. I will say every, every every time I say hi, my name is Armand. They they Armand. Like no, just no D. Armani, D is silent. Armani, yeah, I get that all the time too. No, I'm I'm definitely Armani the only one who said it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, first person. <laughs> uh, this movie was incredibly long. Yeah, so long. It was like the length of an actual NFL game. It was like two and a half yeah. hours. Two and a half hours. Um, I remember pausing at half, like with going in an hour. And I was like, oh shit, I still got an hour, hour and a half left. Yeah. Get this movie is filled with the shittiest quotes of all time. Like, like the most easiest to write fucking lines I've ever heard. Like, I, well, what? Like, fucking beer. Timeout is for TV. Throw it to the Buick. Everything's nonsense in this movie. Yeah. It's all fucking bullshit. I can't believe people pumped up for the movie. the best quote that i wrote down was when jamie fox he first goes in and one of the linebackers trying to intimidate him and i'm pretty sure he said you better get used to this motherfucker i'm gonna be picking penis out of your ass <laughs> 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 maybe he said like is, is picking pennies out of your ass a thing but i swear he said picking penis out of it <laughs> like there's a bunch of penis in there and he's gonna james wood after he gets fired, is talking, and then he's like, "Come on with me, Courtney, his cheerleader girlfriend." And she, she's like, "No, I'm sticking around here." And he goes, "Why don't you go get butt butt fucked by these twelve Neanderthals?" <laughs> like this movie is outrageous. Yeah, she looked good. She did. She, her her see like he's her nipples were. I've erect. seen that video. He said it as an insult, but you know he's gonna get mad that she might do that. Yeah, you know? Jesse Spano, you need a pump. Or what do you need? You know, and Pacino pump. goes, a pump. <laughs> Talking about his death. penis yeah. pump. Needs, yeah. <laughs> Big penis pump. Uh, Austin Powers. A uh, little trivia. The house that Dennis Quaid uh, lived in, that was uh, that's Dan Marino's actual house, or it was at the time. Oh. So, really, art, art imitating life. And uh, you guys have any uh, have any theories for connections? I know we already mentioned Jesse Spano. That was one that because uh, her prostitute name can't be her real name. And I'm assuming her show she changed her name in Showgirls to something else as well. So I think Jesse Spano spiraled out of control after her addiction to caffeine pills in that one episode, or she got hooked back on the caffeine pills which I take multiple times daily and I'm fine. And, and I, I also have sex with old football coaches for money, but do you think showgirls or any given Sunday came first in her, her timeline? I would say any given Sunday. Well, no, you go stripper, yeah. then hooker. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she was a prime like stripper and then mm-hmm. she just got hooked up with the right people and she just kept climbing up. Yeah, she like that's just economics, baby. Yeah, you know, trickle down economics. She didn't want to. Yeah. 
she didn't want to lower herself to uh to sex work but then uh you know sometimes the pool dries up sometimes you get a few good johns and uh yeah you're in business sometimes you gotta pump a few old dudes for you know especially one 30k especially ones you're fans of you know yeah you know you met so she was 16 could you imagine getting paid to fuck someone that you're that you're a fan of women have it they've really had it too good for too long (laughs) yeah right (laughs) i wrote down do celebrities get proposition from whores to fuck them probably probably these hookers are just living their dream lives and the funny thing is it's like if a hooker came up to me she'd probably be like what she'd probably have like a c-section scar you know missing tooth you know smells like cigarettes Yeah. yeah but you know these famous people they probably got hard times asking him for sex for money yeah well maybe i I hope the the haggard ones kind of look kind of go up to him as well uh but they just <laughs> just like really swing for the live their dreams yeah. yeah yeah and what if they're what, well you know you, this is my big I, moment bernice yeah <laughs> this is huge for me this that's they their big land. break that's when it comes out you know tom brady bangs hooker from tampa bay oh no she he's married Bruce to uh like, to giselle yeah if he cheats on her then loves a lie hooker. You know, yeah. yeah. What's the old saying? There's a no matter how attractive a woman is, there's always a guy that's tired of fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. Really? <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> that was our pledge of allegiance in in, middle, in elementary school. Yeah. If she's in the movie Taxi, you better not cheat on her. That's what my dad always said. <laughs> Queen Latifah, and that's why. Queen Latifah and Giselle, the two, the holy trinity of women. The only two women that you cannot cheat let's on. Watch, uh, let's watch Taxi sometime. Yeah. I do every night. <laughs> That's how I start my day. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so Jesse Spano, anything else you guys got? Um, yeah, kind of going on with, like, normal, um, some athletes do. You know how Jordan going to baseball and shit like that. Um I'm thinking maybe Dennis played once he was done, and he probably got divorced with his wife since she's, he wasn't making the as worst. much money as he used to. She's I think he um, went back home and settled with a, you know, maybe a high school sweetheart that might have lost a husband down the road and had a kid, and then uh, he starts coaching a, a high school baseball team, and then he starts throwing some heat, and then he starts playing pro baseball. Yeah, shoulder his shoulder uh, heals up, rookie. makes him stronger, yeah, sure. mm-hmm. and like a rookie of the year situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, what movie was he yeah. in? What was that movie? The rookie. the rookie, rookie of the year, is with the the kid from American Pie. It breaks his arm. Cubs. I met that guy. Yeah, he used to play. He, uh, he would play in a a very low level band that came to the bar I worked at in Champagne. And uh, he got on a That's tour awesome. bus and was trying to, he was going around to frat parties trying to get women and like pulling them on the bus and bringing them to the, it was a, he's a kind of a kooky guy. Yeah. Um, I was on this date and we, we, we went to the Cubs game and then we ended up going to the Cubby Bear and the bouncer at the door asked me if I was him. And I was just like, <laughs> nice. I was like, no, man, uh, I appreciate that, Dude. I guess. That's got to be a code word for you selling drugs. You yeah, went, you, I, I probably. Yeah, you know, he probably was offering me coke, and I. Declined. You went down on Tara Reed, dude. Yeah, I, I think I in did. her prime. Yeah, in high school, she was something in her prime. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I got a little too caught up with high school, you know, and just never left. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm trying to go to uh, go to a prom so I can finally lose my virginity. You know, I made a pact with my boys that yeah. we wouldn't lose it till prom. Never got to go, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't lose it so no. got it yeah, 10 years later you know yeah now all the is that what happened in rookie of the year <laughs> <laughs> that's america pie what the hell is that movie about <laughs> yeah he he starts teaching high school has an affair with a student it is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> it's called nookie of the year <laughs> uh nookie of my freshman year oh no <laughs> uh yeah i like i had something similar written down like that I, I would love to see him in even more advanced age coming back and just fucking tearing the game up, tearing a game up. <laughs> Not a... You think, uh, you think, you think LL Cool J retired healthy and made a lot of money. So he became a chef 
and then he boarded a, a submarine. Oh. Um, and then it got attacked <laughs> by sharks. <laughs> I bet those concussions really cost him a couple so different I, things here. And there. I was gonna. And then, I, so that was him, Deep Blue Sea. I got two theories on, on LL. I think maybe he, uh, you know, he he lo- he loves the floral prints, the leopard skin and stuff. He decides to go out in the jungle with J Lo and then run into. A, <laughs> he he thought he he first saw that giant anaconda. He thought it was his boy's hog from the locker room. He, <laughs> yeah. thought he, was, just, he was at home. He's like, I'm back in the game, baby. Any given Sunday. Look at that. That's my boy. That's Marcus over there or whatever. <laughs> Back to work. And, uh, it turns out it was a, it was a man-eating uh, python in, 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 in Anaconda. It wasn't Willie was Peebles. No, it wasn't the man-eating python he thought it was. Just an it Anaconda. <laughs> Demon had a python. This is, a, this is an Anaconda. So it was the, it was the it was the black hog in the in the locker room trying to eat him. And, oh, dude! And Maybe Anaconda. Anaconda came first, and he saw that hog, and he he gets he gets a little. <laughs> that that was a PTSD he saw. <laughs> Started getting scared. Oh, yeah, dude. Post traumatic dong syndrome. <laughs> ah! oh, oh. He's waking up in the middle of the night. It's it starts coiling around him and squeezing him. Yeah. Can't do Fourth of July. Can't do Valentine's Day. Coming out dude. looking him. You got to get a Indian dude with a flute to to get it fucking. Yeah. Get his hog. Yeah. Hog do you going. think snake? You think Snake Pilskin's uh, cobra is actually one of those black hogs from <laughs> Good <Yeah>. Sunday? <laughs> Kurt Russell's playing black hog. Dude. So can you? You can't do blackface, but can you do black hog? The yeah. chest tattoo. Yeah, that's- from Escape from New York, <laughs> now play the hog <laughs> from any given Sunday locker room, yes. now playing <laughs> Anaconda. If, uh, yeah, Black Hog. If you, I don't, you know, you for sure can't do blackface. Black Hog's up for debate. Uh, <laughs> I, if Black Hog Down isn't a porn, that's they're miss. That's a missed opportunity. <laughs> oh. Wait. <laughs> What would be the uh, how did, like? What happens? Like the girls just ride him and his dick breaks, and then they gotta figure out what to do. I, I think have sex throughout the house. I think his dick is stuck beyond enemy lines, and they have to go go oh, get him. They have to go, the girls, the girls have to go save yeah. him. Yeah, I think you guys think these pornos are more creative than they are. <laughs> Black Hawk Down. I'm telling oh, you right no, now so is some of the greatest movies ever. A black seen. dude fucking a day. woman <laughs> that sighed like a hog. Oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you guys are getting way too creative. Yeah. <laughs> Just hit the keywords. Black. Got Hog. it. Hog. Got it. Down. Got it. Do you guys <laughs> think potentially that LL Cool J the whole time was just Drew Barrymore in a mask? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charlie's yeah. Angels. She was pretty badass. I can see her taking out some linebackers. She was know. on her mission. Yeah. Just fucking. You know, maybe that's how she teams up with. Cameron Diaz, and then she ends up jo- selling the team and joining fighting well, for Charlie. Well, Cameron Diaz also speaks to, I mean, these are probably more commonplace back then, but they showed a close-up of the little speaker box in Dennis Quaid's hospital room that she's talking to, and it looks just like the Charlie box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that was a, uh in an inadvertent Easter egg. Yeah. Easter egg, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's that might be all I got for for theories. Oh, uh, I think so too. I love like in football movies when there's a a kid rock or like a a POD or just like these like heavy rock songs, and then it just cuts to the cheerleaders and they're like <laughs> and they're dancing. They're all dancing. Yeah. No, 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 boom! And it's like fucking tits and catching and yeah. your dude's grunting right, let's, okay. let's, cut, let's cut to the tits this movie's so tits. fucking long and it's there's 10 minutes of cheerleader cutscenes, just them humping around dancing to kid rock yeah you can tell this is like, like a tv really show maybe. Like, they like really they really like suck their dicks on making this movie wait you know whose dicks I mean? 
like when wait, they were, and who's like sucking? When they were making the shots or whatever, like the creators, uh, what's his name? Uh, they were probably like, oh man, this, Oliver is, Stone. this is amazing. Yeah. Like this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome. I oh, wrote yeah. down like these the, the cuts are like the music during the football scenes. In most football movies, those are the scenes that like either someone gets injured or they score a touchdown. It's very dramatic moments. That's just how they fucking shoot much too long of football scenes well, like and they would do the tackles with dramatic music no one's it's everyone's fine they would do these dramatic overlays of like old football games with like vince lombardi coaching and like old like leatherhead football players just to and it makes like no sense it's supposed to be like remember where you came from what you start these are the modern day gladiators and they do like lightning strikes in the middle yeah. like an eagle yeah. soaring across it looked like it was like making f- fun of itself yeah exactly but i feel like they did it on purpose because they thought it looked cool. Oh, sure. I, don't, I, I, I think I and it did not. I don't think they were making fun of themselves. I think they, yeah, they definitely thought like, dude, this is gonna be fucking bad. This isn't just a football movie. This is this is something bigger, man. And it's like, yeah, yeah. exactly. But overall, thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, great. That dude's eyeball comes think, out. Uh, yeah, that see that that was like another one too, where it's like this is totally does not need to be in. It was a five-minute scene, scene of a opponent's eyeball getting ripped out. Just pops out. <laughs> That's it. And then they scoop it up. That's it. And it's you hear the Put you hear the baggie. squish. <laughs> Someone eats it. Yeah. Fucking steam and beaming pops it. Yeah. It keeps the ladies I cream. Think, uh, I'm gonna put that song at the end of this. I think. <laughs> I keep the ladies cream. The little fade out. So if I can find it. Cream. Yo, let I leave the girls. Uh, steam I think we're. I think we're. I think we're getting a call though. Uh, I think we're, I think we're getting a call. Getting a call? Uh, ring, 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 oh. ring, ring. Hello. 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 Uh, who is this? Dr. Obaku. Do- Hello. Dr. Obaku. Dr. Obaku. Hello. You guys are doing a movie about my movie Concussion. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot there are a lot of similar, similar themes from Concussion. Similar themes to what? To Concussion. Concussions. This is the Concussion podcast, no. Oh, oh no no! I think that no. I think that tapes next door. This is across the movie verse. What movie are you guys talking about? Uh, Any given Sunday this Any, week. Any given Sunday. Oh, hella concussions in that movie, my boy. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's mostly concussions. They don't treat it as seriously as you did, though. Finally, spreading the fucking word about this. They they kind of glamorize it a bit. This is the remake. No, the remake of concussion. NFL shutting down. Yes. Yeah, yeah, potentially, you know, the nope. the concussions are too bad. I mean, LT almost lost his life. The original, this man breaks his arm, goes on to play with Al Pacino. He's the star. This old man can't see anything, breaks his arm, wife beats him, weak man. LT loves painkillers, <laughs> concussion. Wait. Wife also afraid of him. Is this movie? Is this, this movie? This movie can't, can't be good. Yeah, are we watching? Did we did watch concuss- concussion? Wait, people still watch this movie, boys. Did Concussion rip yeah. off Any Given Sunday? I think Any Given Sunday ripped off the Concussion movie. How did, Maybe. How did they get a copy of that? <laughs> That's the NFL, my boys. Oh, the N- <laughs> got it. The NFL. They just told the uh, real story of the NFL. So the real story in Any, any Given Sunday to you would be the would be LT's concussion by my calculations my boys well do you think two men running at each other is the same as two trucks running into each other is the same as being hit in the head with a sledgehammer my boys but well how do you feel but it's about, so fun to watch you, yeah. i'm in africa i can't watch this i got deported how do you feel about launch ray football though Oh, that's good. That's good. Is there any problems <laughs> See, with with excessive uh, blows to the titty? Does that does yeah. that affect anything in your professional I'll experience? To, as in my medical opinion, I need to go back to the lab. I need to get back to the tapes. Do you think we can get rid of concussions in in uh, lingerie football by instead of tackling and going head first, you just rip off the opponent's clothes? Ah, yes. That's how they get down. Almost like. Um, uh, flag football. <laughs> now flag football, but instead of flags, it's their bras and yeah. panties. Yes, exactly. I think that's 
That would save a lot of lives. Yeah. And it would increase increase ticket more, sales, I imagine. I think more people wouldn't play football. I think they would be like, well, why play football when I can just watch this? Do you think you could like get back into the country and, and help promote your new findings? The NFL, what's his name? Roger Goodman. Goodell. Something Jewish, yes. Ah. He will not let me back in after my findings. Oh. I think if, I I, think if you present your new... I truly cannot believe NFL football is still going on, my boys. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you team up with Barstool, I feel like Goodell hates Barstool. You might, they might rise you to fame and get your, get your research out there. I don't know what you're talking about. What is Barstool? He, I don't think he, he. I don't uh, think he has the internet. How are How are you calling us? By the way. Yeah. This is. I've. I have one call a year. Oh my god! And you chose. And I. Oh, I feel so bad that you didn't get the concussion podcast. I thought this was the concussion <laughs> podcast, my boy. Because that would definitely have a broader reach. I think about four people listen to this, and they love concussions. They've all had some. Get more. <laughs> my, I've had some. Man. My boys, They're the research. Great. This movie, any given Sunday, the coincidence is insane. Have you seen this movie? Well, this, the movie was a hit. It's off the wall, batshit crazy, and I think the concussions really make the movie. I'm I'm pro I'm pro concussion. Is Al Pacino not in this movie, my boys? Oh, he's in the movie. Al Pacino. He he's the poster child of concussions. Have you seen that man do anything? He does like stumble around. His face is kind of drippy. Yeah. <laughs> like he's always he's always drunk. You that know, punch drunk. Yeah. Yeah, emphasis on the goddamn punch, my boy. Well, I think I yeah. think you make a strong case, but I don't know how you're gonna fight the NFL from Africa. Yeah, you're gonna I think have to, we, we might have to. Have to out. Hopefully, this this segment goes viral and people can really catch on to your case. <laughs> my boys, I got people banging on my door. The police. Oh no, it's probably it's Roger Goodell. Oh, no. Do you think he found out? My boys. I think he. My boys. I think he found out. <laughs> oh. Spread the word. All right, we we promise we'll spread the word. I think I think I think I just heard gunshot. Honor the honor the honor the white man. Save the black man, my boys. Wow, man, I hope he. Wow, crazy. I hope he's okay. Goodbye. Oh my gosh. Oh uh, yeah. I'm glad they let him say goodbye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, I'm glad they let him end his call. That sounded terrifying. I hope I hope he gets all that figured out. Wait, you just missed. Just got back from a big old shit. What's up, yeah, boys? We just some guy get I think shot. we just. I, I think our to... uh, one of our callers uh, just got got murdered. You guys got a call in. We had How? a call in. Yeah, from Africa. Were they were they trying to call in from to the concussion podcast? Again? Yeah, yeah. Our, exactly. our numbers are very similar. <laughs> we got to change that. Yeah, I got to change our screen name or our website from concussionpodcast.com dot <laughs> com to something more <laughs> more reasonable. He only got one call a year, so I was going to offer him, you know, um, uh, a joining session when we do uh, concussion next year. But well, apparently, he's he dead. Might be dead. So Hopefully, maybe maybe he'll call back one yeah. day and, and check up on us. Ring, 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 ring! Oh, oh my ring, god, ring, ring. my boys! I have one more podcast. <laughs> I have one more call. I mean, oh my god. let me on the next show. All right, goodbye. Beep. Oh, wait. Man. Okay, All so right, now well. he got one more call. Now we got to wait another year, <laughs> two years maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but he's but he's still he just, alive he just that if your math checks out eric we're not seeing this guy for another two oh my years gosh. Yeah. well i look forward to it i want to check up on him maybe concussions will be solved by then or or at least some titties so. in the laundry football league <laughs> yeah exactly some strip some strip football. Dude, if i played in the laundry <laughs> football league i'll tell you what i'd be getting called for a holding quite a bit you know <laughs> <laughs> Hey, get called for milk. This guy just keeps holding my titty, ref. Hey, whoa. <laughs> you know? I thought that was, I thought that was part of the rules. Well, why would you be <laughs> one man be let in the lingerie, lingerie football league? They, I mean, look at his hair. Yeah, dude. Dude, I fake it. <laughs> you'd be... Dude, I Joanna, man. And you'd be ref as the same? I, I ju- Dude, I, with tra- that's probably why they shut down the lingerie football league. All these, <laughs> all these dudes are up and in there. Yeah, that's Dude. why. And by the end of it, it was the XFL. That's right, the triple XFL. I'd watch that. Let's 
the triple X episode. It's it's it's, it's, right? it's all dudes just in drag, <laughs> thinking they're squeezing each other's titties. They, no one tells them. Like every the audience knows. Everyone knows that it's just all men, but they don't. They have no idea. They think that they just fucking they they struck gold. I'm gonna jo- I'm gonna Joanna man my way into the uh, lingerie football league. I almost called it the lesbian football league, and that would be a hell of a league. <laughs> Yes, they they build the stadium awesome. in an afternoon. Way more athletic. <laughs> yeah, dude, have you seen those games? Those ladies are in state. I don't, I wouldn't even want to join. They'd probably fucking beat my ass. Yeah, they definitely would want to. That's fuck why yeah. I'd want to join. Yeah, no. uh, yeah. let them give me a concussion. Oof. All right. Well, what do we think? We're we're a little over an hour now. I think we're set. Yeah. Quick. I think so. I think that was that was good. good. I recommend. <laughs> I, I, I love. It. I, great movie. I recommend it. It's very long. Maybe break it into episodes. Yeah, so yeah. long. Honestly, yeah. crazy cuts. Ten out of ten in my yeah. mind. Very mm-hmm. good. I up there with football movies. Great speeches. The whole movie's a montage, which is like my dream movie. So, uh, yeah. Two, two, uh, two hogs up. Two black hogs. <laughs> way way up. Way, way up. <laughs> All right. Not down. Stay uh stay healthy out there. Hopefully this uh this reaches you. This could be the you know, the last podcast ever, we don't know. Uh but we'll yeah, see you soon and uh enjoy quarantine. Goodbye. Right. Peace. My name is Willie. I keep the Child find of America. And let's make every kid feel like a superstar.